Thank you. I'm excited, challenged, and honored to be your president. Thank you for your trust. I'm also truly humbled because when I picture myself, it isn't at the podium of an important national conference in a fancy Las Vegas hotel. It's in a nursing school classroom scanning my students' eyes for the question marks and finding a way to deliver essential information to those students to assure understanding. So those students might use that knowledge to care for others. We understand exactly how that student feels because every one of us has felt that way. We join the nursing profession because we must. It's what makes us real to ourselves. We have a rock solid need to care for total strangers, to make a difference to them when they're at their most vulnerable, sometimes at their least lovable. We have compassion and passion for patient care. And when we have the proper tools in our hands, the tools that excellent nurses use, we love the science, we love the work, every day is meaningful. But at the heart of the matter, most of all, nurse educators love to care for the students and the patients they serve. It's what all of us share. It's unspoken most of the time, but it's not unimportant. I've always been a huge fan of the National League for Nursing. I've loved its organization's history. And frankly, I surprised myself when I discovered how much I wanted this job. I was driven by my passion and belief that I could be useful of loving service in support of the NLN's essential mission. The NLN's origins intrigued me. We were America's first organization for nursing. We met in 1894 at the Society of Superintendents of Training Schools for Nurses after nursing leaders convened at the World's Fair in Chicago the previous year. It was their prescient position that nursing education is the foundation that underpins all nursing care and therefore every element of health care itself. The group assembled for the, quote, establishment and maintenance of a universal standard of training. In 1917, our name changed the National League for Nursing Education, and we released the first national curriculum for nursing with its emphasis, unchanged today, that insists faculties themselves must create their own pathways to high education standards. The NLN, as we know it now, defined academic nursing, but respect and credibility to our profession's place in the academy, and always, always supported nursing education to be imaginative and adaptable. Those roots shaped us. It is clear that nursing care results in dramatic changes in the lives of the people we serve. We think about it every day. And the NLN began as an entity defining the cutting edge, and we remain there. This dedication to nurse educators and their pivotal role in human health distinguishes the NLN from other organizations. It is focused, real, built on generations of leaders whose efforts were relentless in advancing nursing practice through excellence in nursing education. The NLN never forgets why nursing educators are game changers, why they merit the best, most current knowledge in order to pave the way for evidence-based practice. We've been nimble in adapting to changing times, equipment, inventions, more drugs therapies, and the cyclic systems of care from homes and hometowns to acute care hospitals and back home again. That knowledge isn't limited to diagnosis and management of diseases, disorders, and conditions, or the latest specialty knowledge. All of it is saturated with caring. It is human compassion infused with the passion for patient care, expressed through the rigor and discipline of our imaginations and intellects. Caring. It's why learners seek nursing and why the development of compassionate nurses is the work of faculties. It is a sacred trust. The NLN's philosophy for nursing education is that teaching itself requires tools, theories, strategies. The NLN exists to provide them. We are a talented team of thousands of faculty volunteers, a dedicated board of governors, and a strong, articulate, and forward-thinking staff. As the NLN, we know that refueling nursing faculties is mandatory. 
It is our, both our privilege and our responsibility. It is also an essential expression of our dedication to humanity, not simple, not easy, not well compensated. But it is our calling. As nurse educators, we impact the lives of countless human beings we never will meet face to face. The NLN gives me, and all of us, a framework and channel for expressing what we're like inside. People who love us understand. I give my time, passion, energy, and my best efforts. The people who have my back, my team, include my husband of 44 years, my brothers, dear friends and colleagues, and my four-legged buddy, Duke, our miniature schnauzer. <laughs> For me, nursing education is the crown jewel of our profession. Each one of us indirectly influences more patient care than any single researcher, administrator, or nurse could ever possibly do. We shape, guide, and direct the lifetime work of all nurses at all levels. LPN, diploma, AD, BS, MS, doctoral. My pathway to the NLN began when I was an undergraduate nursing student at Duke. My mother was the community board member of Constituent League of the National League for Nursing, the Connecticut League for Nurses Board of Directors. Volunteer work was so meaningful to her that she was eager to expose it to me. So I audited her course by sitting on the sidelines at many board meetings. It got me pondering the pivotal role of nurse educators and the differences they had already made in my life. I learned that volunteering was a rewarding way to serve the profession I love. In short, I caught the volunteer bug. And I can't imagine my career, in fact my life, without the volunteer work that has made me the nursing leader I have become. My promise to the NLN and to you personally, to the present and to the future of nursing profession, is that I will do my best to assure that our members have the resources, the latest and best research, the newest techniques, and the encouragement to co-create the best teaching learning environments. I'm proud to be an NLN leader, to serve our profession and to give my time, energy, intellect, and spirit to advancing nursing faculties. So how will I do this? What will we do together in the next two years? I think we need to talk about how we will best ways we will advance our work internationally. The NLN's mission statement includes an important word. We've heard it often. That word is global. During our two years together, we will focus on international nursing education and educators. Let me explain why. In my day job, I am dean of what is probably the largest public nursing education program in the country. On any given day, we are preparing some 19,000 students. We can handle so many students because of our incredibly hardworking faculty has found ways to increase capacity. They're here through our use of values and those values shared with the NLN, caring, integrity, diversity, and excellence. We stirred in our determination of responsibility and to be responsive to those communities we serve and to our students. We started with high quality in-seat programming, painstakingly in continual conversation with our students and with great attention to detail. We found innovative ways to adapt our programming to the online world. I'm proud that our college now has earned designation as the NLN Center of Excellence a testament to our faculty's stellar student-focused efforts. I point this out not only because I'm very proud of our faculty, but because I think the NLN's international challenges are surprisingly similar. One NLN objective is to be a key player in creating a community of nurse educators from around the world and to influence issues related to excellence in nursing. As we, as faculty, need open, receptive approaches to understanding international nursing education. From our large online experience, I am learning some of the options now available to us thanks to the cloud. Imagine the possibilities, how we might take maximum advantage of options 
that would have been pipe dreams only months ago. I have no idea how I got this lucky. Over the years, I've learned from nursing faculties around the world. Such rich conversations open my eyes to similarities and variations in both nursing education and nursing care. For me, they continue to reinforce how much we have to offer one another. Our languages may be different, but our messages are the same. Nurse educators speak the language of the heart. We work in a wide array of contexts, but our passion for humans and their welfare permeates our lives. It's trite and true, the world is shrinking. Advances in healthcare practices span the planet as quickly as diseases like Ebola take airplane rides to new populations. Our nursing populations are part of this dynamic and fluid movement. I believe it's essential that we alert our students to their own identities as citizens of the global village. Have we ourselves become the global nursing faculty that shows the world how to use international awareness to build best practices? Our global counterparts, too, are responsible for the quality, the excellence of their programs and their graduates. How they work, their pathways to excellence are fascinating. For example, let's talk about clinical instruction. For many of us, finding clinical placement for our students and competent clinical faculty to guide them are barriers to maximum program effectiveness and expansion. They limit our capacity to mitigate the urgent need for more and more educated nurses. Other nations tackle nursing clinical faculty differently. I learned about this a year ago when I spent my Fulbright award time focusing on clinical training issues. In Lithuania, for example, clinical instruction is provided by staff nurses from healthcare agencies. Guiding students is part of their professional routine and expectation in their job descriptions. It's not viewed as anything unusual. They work as preceptors and without university-based faculty on site. Everyone does it. Immediately, many of you are thinking of the reasons that approach wouldn't work here, and I'm not saying it necessarily should. But what can we gain from educators who design courses to be taught that way? How can those educators learn from the clinical faculty roles we use? There is excellence in many international programs that reaches and exceeds the standards of our college, our program, a center of excellence in nursing education. One of my dreams is to welcome our first COE recipients from another nation during my term as president and to provide a forum for them to tell us their stories. We are planning this journey and already have a phenomenal international nursing leader to keynote our next summit so that you can hear what we've heard. You can expect an exciting, outstanding experience next year, so come. Nationally, inherent in the NLN's commitment to nursing education and to the specialized role of the nurse educator, is dedication to students and to the nursing profession itself. By promoting a climate that emphasizes comfortable communication and professional commerce between students and educators, alongside encouragement that students exercise sound clinical judgment, practice using ethical standards, and support and respect their colleagues, nurse educators constantly demonstrate their commitment to the profession. These obligations are at the heart of the nurse educator's role to influence the next generation of nurses who will value caring, collaborative learning, and ethical standards. The NLN fully recognizes the value of codes of ethics developed by the American Nurses Association and the International Council of Nurses. A long-held nursing standard is the use of these codes by nurses to guide clinical practice. The NLN fully supports ANAs and other national and international organizations' current focus on ethics. The NLN would explore ethical guidelines for nurse educators to promote a culture and environment based on cooperation, support, and mutual enrichment based on our core values. In fact, the NLN would consider development of ethical principles for nursing education to provide a foundation for ethical practice for all members of the nursing education community. 
forecasting the next few years in greater details beyond my scope today. My feet are not yet wet enough with presidential waters to be sure about the details of the future. But I am confident that my presidential priorities and activities will remain true to what we've explored together today. We're embracing our members, expanding our mutual horizons through international dialogue, and exploring codes for our own conduct. We are the National League for nursing. Please note, we're not the National League of nursing. It reflects our founding values. It reflects our founding values that educators are pivotal for the profession and must have a specific form for their purposes. We believe faculty members are our greatest hope for continuing to advance human health, and we act on your behalf. The NNLN is a service, a resource. We have an impressive past. We have an important future. I have my, you have my solemn promise that I will operate from my deep conviction as to why the National League for nursing exists, to give our nursing faculty members the best resources to advance the crucial role of teaching, the protection and advancement of the cadre of people who want to be nurses. It's all about care. Making life easier for others, caring for faculty places the NLN at the forefront of nursing. For without a strong faculty, quality health care is not part of our nation's or our world's future. This is why the NLN was created and why I am honored to be your president. <laughs>